What is going on everybody? Thanks for checking out today's video. Today we are going to be putting together the Polygon Syncon C2. So this is a full carbon, it says it's an XC cross country race bike. And this is a bike that I got for my wife and I am super stoked to put this together and check out my build video of the Sys UT7 Polygon bike. And we're going to be taking these things out and really hitting the trails, trying to do some rides with it. But stay tuned, we're going to be putting this thing together and it is an awesome bike. Uh, for just about anybody that's looking for a pretty budget-friendly quality bike that has a lot of solid components on it. All right, guys, we're going to be putting this thing in the stand, so follow with me. We're going to be taking this thing out, and I'll show you how to put this thing together. And by the way, if you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you. Also, hit that like button. It helps me out on the channel a lot. If you've never bought stuff from Bikes Online, they come shipped very well and package that way if you ever want to reuse the box or maybe ship it to somebody else or pack it up if you're moving you can actually do it very easily uh, the way they package it they use velcro straps and little pieces of foam to actually hold it together that way it doesn't bang around in there also they like to give you a little gift kit here it comes with a torque wrench and a couple other things we'll break it open right here But it's pretty cool how they give you this stuff. So it has the owner's manual, has a little torque wrench here, the bits, a spanner wrench, and it comes with a pretty decent set of pedals, some uh, entity stuff in here. It's got some uh, other little pamphlets, uh, a bottle opener, and these little things that everybody usually just throws away. All right, so nice little gift set there. That is pretty cool that they actually include some of this stuff. And especially that torque wrench and just making sure that you're getting your bolts uh, to where they need to be as far as torque goes and not stripping those things out. I'm sure it's a nightmare uh, them getting bikes sent back because somebody had to strip out those bolts. All right, we'll put this aside. All right, the time we've been waiting for, pulling this bike out and seeing what it's made of. And wow, where this thing is a full carbon bike, it is really light. We're gonna be doing another video on the actual specs of this bike. But today guys, we are just building it up and my wife is super stoked to get on this thing. So we're gonna be building this thing pretty quick. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, we're gonna be taking this, the straps and all that off and then we'll put it in the bike stand and get this thing put together. Oh, this thing is just light as a feather. I can't believe how light this is. That is awesome. Slide that up a little bit, give us some room. But you can hear that, it's just straight carbon. Nice paint job on it. You know, I wasn't expecting it to be this put together. You know, this thought through and, and looking as nice as it is. There's quite a bit of grease on the back here. Uh, the chain stay, the guard on that, it's, it's okay. Uh, we'll probably wipe this down just a little bit. Some of the other bikes I've got from Polygon, they just kind of, the fork's just kind of sitting in there. This one's in there pretty tight. One thing to keep in mind with the hydraulic brakes, don't squeeze these levers before you get this put together. So one thing you want to keep in mind is the relation of the cables to where you actually put the bars. So you saw I had to swivel the fork around and actually see which side the cables are entering in because this does have internal cable routing. So you want to make sure this one is on the left side of the bike, so going to the right side control. All right. So using the provided torque wrench here and the bits, we're gonna go through and loosen these up. Now I would recommend using the torque wrench to actually loosen bolts up if they're on there too tight. 
Uh, but if you're just barely going to be loosening bolts, I think it's okay. You really don't want to throw this thing out of calibration too much. Okay, so when you're placing the bars in, there's certain things you need to look for. So we already talked about the relation of the cables and how it's routed, because you don't want anything to get kinked up here. Uh, this one's actually going down straight, so that's good. And this one's looped around. Uh, but for centering out your bars here, this does have a little indicator right here signifying where it needs to be lined up. So we're gonna go for that reference point. I think it's gonna be pretty much spot on. Go ahead, and this does have an individual clamp for each side here. Pretty much dead center between the two clamps and top to bottom, we wanna make sure it's centered as well. Go through and start snugging these down, making sure we're not losing the center line of this thing. Making sure everything's getting tightened up evenly across the stem. And the owner's manual does reference the torque specifications in the very back of it. For this, we're gonna go five Newton meters. So with your little provided torque wrench, once you can see the five in relation to the bar, that is gonna signify the actual torque specification. So these are still a little loose. We're gonna get them a little bit more snug so we can see the actual torque. All right, so. You want to grab the end of the bar here. All right, so we can see the five. That's good. Oh, it's still pretty far off. Okay, you can see the five again. Okay, I see the five. And I can see the five. All right, so definitely make sure you're not going to strip out your bolts. So make sure you're using the specifications for the torque as a good reference. Uh, if you need to, once you get the bike down on the ground, you can actually set up the controls to how you need it because it's going to be based on rider preference and the overall feel. Headset feels pretty good. doesn't feel gritty or anything I like that. Okay, next up, we're going to grab the front wheel. We're gonna take this throw axle skewer off here. And this is a pretty nice little through axle skewer. You can see how this actually you know, goes in and then clamps down. So this is a pretty cool little axle. It can definitely help if you're having to transport, you know, by using it in your car or something like that. This is the little safety device so you don't squeeze your brake your brake lever before you actually have a rotor in there. So you wanna make sure that's in there before you squeeze your brake handle. So right now is an awesome time to go ahead and put some grease on your through axle. And that's just gonna make sure this doesn't get any contamination or excess wear or anything on here. I'm just gonna rub this in just a little. Okay, see how we got that on there. Make sure you do not get grease on your brake rotor. It will just destroy those pads. Okay, once it goes through, start tightening that bad boy down. All right, so we get the front through axle on here. It is a quick release style. Pretty cool. So there is a little bit of rubbing on that front rotor. So what you wanna do here is rotate this around, loosen up your caliper. That thing was on there tight. God bless. Okay, that one's not too bad. All right, so get that loosened up to where it can move freely. And then what we're gonna do is spin it and then grip that down by applying 
the front brake, and then we're gonna tighten it back down. So in theory, this should line it up perfect. Okay, so we got that front brake rotor rub almost out, but I think it's got a little slight bend in it, which we'll end up fixing that once we get out and start riding this thing home. So, and this thing looks killer though. Look at this fork, that fork looks pretty cool. So the pedals are labeled left and right, and so are the crank arms. So we'll pull this little sticker off here. It's covering up the old Dior logo. So make sure you get the right pedal. Usually these will thread on forward and then you just go ahead and use your spanner wrench that they give you to finish putting these on and you don't have to crank these down extremely tight especially if you have aluminum crank arms really damage them and then you just do the same thing for the other side all right this thing is looking pretty sick uh, we're gonna get the seat post installed just undo the clamp here get this little piece out Oh, there's like a little plug that kind of went down in it. Pretty nice entity branded seat. I like this. And it does seem like the seat tube going down is pretty well greased. We'll leave that loose till we get the, the bike on the ground. We'll set it up. All right, so before we put this down on the ground, we're gonna go through and cycle through the gears to make sure this drivetrain is actually shifting the way it should be before we actually get it down on the ground. all the way down all right listen to that hub sound pretty nice take a play in there 1500 bucks for this polygon syncline 27 and a half inch c2 mountain bike all right got those shimano brakes working in the rear seem to work pretty well we don't have a lot of uh, brake rubs so that's pretty cool uh straight out of the box this thing works really well and polygon from the factory is supposed to set up these drop train so they shift pretty smooth right out of the box so uh i can't contest to that it works pretty well all right guys thanks for watching this video this was just a simple how to build pretty much any type of bike you get from polygon or bikes online where you actually have to assemble it yourself in your garage uh, this is pretty much how you do it besides a full suspension build if you want to see a full suspension polygon bike build check out my siskiyou t7 polygon bike build and i go through how to set the sag and all that we even check out rebound a little bit but where this has a hydraulic fork on it, you're not worried about air or anything like that. So it's pretty much set up straight out of the factory to where you need it uh, to be for your rider preference. It does have a rebound adjustment down at the bottom of the fork here. Uh, but if you wanna check out rebound and how to adjust rebound, check out some of my videos on my channel on how to actually do that. All right, guys, uh, the last thing here to do is just pull it on the ground out of the bike stand here. Uh, adjust your seat height to where you need to have it set for your rider preference. Uh, typically have your leg almost straight if you're going to go all the way full lockout. And then when you get this on the ground, you can also set up your controls to where they need to be in relation to your hands and where you like them for your preference. All right, guys, if you want to see a review video of this bike where we actually break down the specifications, go out, do some little bit of test rides on this thing. And I, this is my wife's bike, so this is a small version with the 27 and a half inch wheels. Uh, it might be a little bit small for me, but we're gonna be doing some test rides on it. Uh, definitely check out that video if you wanna see how this thing actually performs. All right guys, thanks for watching this build. If you like this kind of stuff, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel as well, and we'll catch you in those next videos. Go digging in.